right, so uh, yesterday we started talking about vertebrates, and we talked all about fish. Wait, is a frog a vertebrate? So we had talked all about fish, which is one of the classes in the phylum chordata. Today we're going to talk about another class, amphibians. Okay. Um, so amphibians, another class of vertebrates, the name itself, amphibian, it comes from two words, ampha and bios. Okay. And what that means is double life. Why do you think amphibian, why would you think double life is the words that they came up with for amphibian? Why, what's, how would they be called that, Kat? And two hearts? Um, no, not two hearts, Lindsay. Bio means two. Yeah, what's that? Bio means two. Well, in this case, bios means life, so double life. So if you guys think about a frog, what do you know about frogs? Oh. Aaron? Yeah, that they can live on water, or they live in water for a part of their life, they live on land for a part of their life. Okay? So, obviously, you guys are a little bit confused between reptiles and amphibians. So amphibians okay, live part of their life on land, part in the water. Okay? Um, amphibians include frogs, all types of frogs. And frogs have smooth skin. The relatively moist, long hind legs. Toads are another type of amphibian. They have drier skin. They're often bumpy, shorter hind legs, often might live in drier conditions. And then there are the salamanders and newts. They have four, four limbs. Of tails in the adult stages. So, see their frogs, frogs. toads. Frogs. Yep. Have different pictures. Yeah, you have different pictures. Mm -hmm. And I like that. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. All right. So. Whoa! Whoa! That's, that? that's a dog. It's a toad. Yeah, that's, wait, is that like a poisonous tree frog? Tree frog. That's our picture. Salamander. Those are our pictures. I love that All right, so let's talk a little bit about some of these. Um, so amphibians have bodies covered in um, generally a thin, moist skin. And one um, thing about the skin of uh, amphibians is that they can actually get oxygen through their skin. So they have lungs that they use for breathing and taking oxygen, but they also can absorb oxygen right through their skin into blood vessels that are on the underside of it. Now, yesterday we talked about what cold and warm blood is meant. Amphibians are also cold-blooded. So their body temperature changes, it fluctuates, depending on their surroundings. Like fish, amphibians have external fertilization. The female frog releases eggs. The male frog deposits sperm on those eggs, but it happens outside of the body. You know, and sometimes that happens in the water, sometimes above the water. It depends. Okay? So generally what happens is during mating, okay, the female is on the bottom. She releases eggs, while the male at the same time releases sperm onto those eggs to fertilize. Once they're fertilized, those eggs grow outside of the body. They develop into embryos outside of the body. Has everyone ever seen frog eggs? Yes. Have like you ever been like out in a, in a river or a stream and like, or a pond? You might come across some frog eggs. They are um, in sort of a, a mass of jelly, which keeps them sort of all together so that they can be fertilized by the male so that they can be 
home, home row there. Um, I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. In terms of their circulatory system, what did fish have? How many chambers in their heart? Three. Two. Just an atrium and a ventricle. Amphibians have a three-chambered heart. They have three separate chambers. Okay? And those chambers here, and you'll see a little diagram of the heart. There's one, two, three chambers into the, uh, in the heart of an amphibian. Two of them are atrium, the right atrium and the left atrium. And then there's one chamber called the ventricle. Now, did, is this messed up? My right and left? Yeah. Or no? Yes. Maybe it's just up. No. Whenever we're talking about anatomy like this, we imagine that this heart, like if I were a frog, and that were my heart, and it was inside my body, and you're looking at me, this is my right side. So that's where the right atrium is. And this is my left hand. That would be my left atrium. And so when you look at it on a paper, it seems to be reversed right to left. But imagine if you're looking at it when it was inside of the actual animal. Okay. So in this three-chambered heart, blood from the body comes in this side and gets circulated here. Blood from the lungs comes in this side and then gets pumped out to the other parts of the body. Amphibians can get oxygen from multiple sources. They can get it directly through their skin. Because on the underside of their skin, there are all these blood vessels. So oxygen can just diffuse into their blood through that skin, into those blood vessels. During the early stage of development in frogs, We'll talk about metamorphosis in a second. But frogs in their immature stages are called tadpoles. And tadpoles actually live in the water. And they breathe using gills. Gills are adapted to getting oxygen out of the water. But as the tadpoles mature eventually into adult frogs, those gills disappear and are replaced by lungs, which are used for breathing air. So as the frog goes through the process of metamorphosis, how it gets oxygen changes. Right? Is it possible for like um like the left at atrium. atrium to go like to accidentally go in like the right atrium? Be for blood to go there? Yeah. Like no, opposite. we'll talk about this more when we get to humans. There are valves in between, which oh. make sure the blood only can go the okay. in one s certain direction. Okay. All right, so frogs go through the process of metamorphosis. We talked about metamorphosis with insects. Frogs go through this process of metamorphosis, a change in their body structure over time. Okay. And so frogs hatch from eggs into what? Tadpoles. tadpoles. How many of you have seen tadpoles out in nature? Okay. Yeah, they look like what? Fish. A little fish. They're not fish. They're just immature amphibians, but they look kind of like them. They live in the water. They hatch. You know, they have tails, they have gills for getting oxygen out of the water. They have no arms or legs. But eventually, those tadpoles start to mature and they start to change. They start to change into what's going to become an adult frog. What happens is they start to grow limbs, starting with the back legs, then front legs. They start to grow a tail. I mean, I'm sorry, the tail starts to disappear and be absorbed back into the body. Their gills start to disappear. Lungs start to form. 
eventually they form an uh, immature froglet, it's called, until eventually they develop into the adult frog, which can then usually move on to land and live permanently on land. And that's the process of metamorphosis in, in frogs. You know, you're talking more about that. So, hold on, hold on. So, many amphibians, like right now, we have amphibians that obviously live around here, frogs and toads and, and newts and them. We're not going to see them now. Okay? It's winter. There's no food for them to eat. Okay? What they're doing is hibernating. Amphibians often will hibernate in cold conditions. And hibernation is basically going into a state of very, very low body activity. We're basically, they're not moving. They're breathing very, very slowly. Their heart is beating very slowly. And they don't need a lot of energy. Because they're just sitting there, waiting out the winter. But they do need some energy. And so they're not eating, there's no food. So what happens is they bury themselves in the mud and they live off of stored up energy. During the spring and the summer when the amphibians have plenty of food, they store up extra energy. And they for store it in this organ that are called fat bodies. When we do our frog dissection eventually and you open up your frog, what you're going to see is it may have these orangish parts within it. Those are the fat bodies. This frog was eating well. It had lots of energy. It made a lot of these fat bodies. If it had less food available, there may be less of them. If the frog died during the end of the winter, there would be very few because it would have used them up. So these fat bodies are built up over the spring, over the summer, until hibernation, and then it uses that energy that was stored to live off of. Those are the fat bodies. Finally, frogs have, like we said, external fertilization. Female frog will lay eggs in the water. They don't lay as many eggs as a fish. Frogs might lay hundreds of eggs at a time, not thousands. They usually lay eggs in the springtime, and they're in a mass of jelly. Ooh. So each of these little black things is a frog embryo. So there's hundreds of eggs this person's holding, and they're all enclosed in this like jelly-like substance. Okay. And they will eventually grow as eggs, mature, and hatch into tadpoles. Questions about amphibians. Okay, we're not going to move on to reptiles today. We're going to save that for later in the week.